playing what he called devil's advocate, Bertrand Russell wrote in the 1950s that the fate of the world depends on, I quote, the decisions of Khrushchev, Mao, and Dulles. Dulles was Secretary of State of the United States under Eisenhower at that time. Russell added, they do not read our books and would find them very silly if they did. Things have changed since then, but the power is still concentrated in the hands of relatively few people at the head of the IMF, the World Bank, the Pentagon, the World Trade Organization, etc. What difference do you think people like you or us can make? In case you reply that the general public has an influence on leaders, the same question arises. Do they read our books? Well, um, the Russell uh, quote uh, it makes sense. It's a good answer to, it's a good response to a uh, slogan that's uh, familiar among uh, activists. It's uh, actually a slogan used by uh, some of my close friends in the activist movement, particularly uh, uh, the Quaker activists, very good, very courageous people, uh, constantly engaged not only in protest but in resistance, civil disobedience. And their slogan is that you have to speak truth to power. And Russell's response, I think, is uh, uh, an apt response to the idea that you should speak truth to power. There's no point speaking truth to uh, Stalin, uh, Khrushchev in his day, uh, Mao and Dulles, uh, they don't want to hear it or they know it. Uh, but I think we shouldn't accept the slogan in the first place uh, for many reasons. Uh, for one thing, Russell's reasons. Uh, for, uh, for another thing, that's not our audience. As Jean pointed out, uh, it's uh, uh, people who can uh, create conditions under which the leadership is compelled to make decisions. Actually, we've seen that in uh, what's being called the Arab Spring. Even uh, the dictators have to respond to uh, organized public opinion, and it's plainly much more true in more free societies. And it's not just a matter of influencing leaders, but also throwing them out, uh, replacing them, in fact, eliminating uh, leadership altogether. So power is the wrong audience. Uh, the audience is uh, people who uh, can uh, influence power or assume power. Uh, also, the idea of speaking truth to them it doesn't seem to me a, uh, to capture the right concept. Uh, for one thing, who are we to speak truth? Do we uh, have some special uh, insight into the truth? I mean, we do our best, other people do their best. Uh, so you should be uh, speaking uh, your what you best, uh, your best, for presenting your best understanding of complex affairs of the world and human life. And you shouldn't be speaking to them. Uh, ideally, what you should be doing is what a, a good teacher should be doing, speaking with them, uh, interacting with them, learning from them, as is constantly the, the case in serious dialogue. So the right idea should be uh, speaking with uh, people who are in a, who, who can be are part of the general public, uh, um, in, concerned and committed to uh, uh, improving, changing, maybe uh, overthrowing uh, uh, structures of power and dominance, and uh, learning with them, uh, encouraging them to uh, in, uh, using what uh, 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 resources you have. Uh, most of us are we're privileged, so we have access to resources, to training, and so on, and that can uh, contribute to uh, popular movements. It always does, uh, but also learning from them. Well, Jean asked, uh, do they need our books? Well, that's up to them. Uh, actually, I think uh, they probably do, at least they devour them. And it uh, has an effect, and there's an interacting effect. It changes the kind of things uh, one writes and speaks. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, though I kind of agree with the criticism, I think it's not directed to the, uh, to the true uh, uh, issues at hand.